Now in this lecture we're going to look at reactions and their equations. Whenever a compound undergoes a reaction without changing its molecular formula, this type of reaction is known as a physical reaction. Now examples include melting, freezing, evaporation, and condensation. Now note that other examples exist. Now let's look at evaporation of water. Whenever a water molecule in the liquid state gains enough kinetic energy, it escapes the bonds of the liquid molecules and becomes a gas molecule. And that means our compound goes from the liquid state to the gas state. But note that our molecular formula remains H2O. And that means evaporation is a physical reaction. Now on the contrary, whenever a compound goes from one molecular formula to a different compound with a different molecular formula, this type of reaction is known as a chemical reaction. Now examples include combustion of hydrocarbons, in which a hydrocarbon burns in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Other examples include oxidation reduction reactions, combination and addition reactions. Now let's look at the following chemical reaction in which the following hydrocarbon C2H6 reacts in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and a water molecule. Now remember what the conservation of energy and the conservation of mass tells us. Mass cannot be destroyed or created. It always exists. And that means whatever we put into our equation, we have to take out. In other words, the amount of atoms of each respective atom, the carbon, the H, and the O, whatever we put in, we must get out. Now notice in this equation, we put in two C atoms and get one C. We put in six H atoms and only get two H atoms back. And somehow we put in only two O atoms and we get three O atoms back. This type of an equation where our numbers are unbalanced, our coefficients and atoms are unbalanced, is known as an unbalanced equation. To balance this equation, we basically have to multiply each atom by some number, so that the number on this side of each atom equals the number on this side. So let's balance this out. Now let's begin with carbon. Now on this side, we have two carbons, while on this side, we only have one carbon. To balance this out, we multiply this side, this CO2, by 2. If we multiply this by 2, we get two carbons on this side and two carbons on this side. So now, whatever amount of carbons we put in, namely 2, we get 2 back. So that makes sense. Next, let's, ba let's balance out the H atoms. Now, we put in 6 H atoms and only get 2 back. So let's multiply this water molecule by coefficient of 3. So if we multiply it by 3, we get 6 H atoms and 6 H atoms. So we're putting in 2 C atoms and 6 H atoms, and we're getting back 2 C atoms and 6 H atoms. Finally, let's balance the oxygen out. So notice we have 2 times 2 oxygen, so 4 oxygen here, and 3 times 1 oxygen, 3 oxygens here. So we have a total of seven oxygens here. That means we have to multiply this guy by seven over two. Because seven over two times two, the twos cancel, and we are left with seven oxygen molecules here. So in other words, we put in two carbons, six H's, and seven O's, and we get back two carbons, six H's, and three times one, two times four, seven O's. So this type of reaction is called a balanced equation. Now, notice that what these coefficients represent is moles or molecules or atoms. But what they can never represent is mass. So these numbers, these coefficients, in this case 1, 1, 1, 1, in this case 1, 7 over 2, 2 and 3, will <coughs> will never represent mass. So never kilograms, never grams, never pounds, never any type of mass. Only moles, atoms, or molecules. In other words, one mole of this hydrocarbon reacts with 
7 over 2 moles of diatomic oxygen to produce 2 moles of carbon dioxide and 3 moles of water. We can never say 1 gram of this guy reacts with 7 over 2 grams. That makes no sense. These coefficients represent moles, molecules, or atom. Never any mass. So whenever a reaction is set to run to completion, what that basically means is that one of the reactants is completely used up, it's completely depleted. Note, however, most reactions do not run to completion, and that's because before one of the reactants is used up, equilibrium is established. Now suppose the following reaction, x plus y, react to form our product xy. And suppose this reaction achieves equilibrium before one of the reactants is used up. What that means is that the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate. So the rate at which our reactants react to produce our product is the same as the rate at which the product dissociates into our reactants. In other words, the concentration of this guy or of these guys and this guy remains the same even though the reactions are occurring and that's because they are occurring at the same rate. Now suppose we have the following combustion reaction in which methane combusts in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Suppose this reaction is allowed to go to completion. Now what happens if two moles of methane of this guy react with six moles of water. So what happens? Well let's see. Let's first notice that the ratio of the number of moles of methane to the number of moles of oxygen is 1 to 2. So that means whenever one mole reacts with two moles of this guy, they produce carbon dioxide, one mole, and two moles of water. So now we have two moles of methane reacting with oxygen. That means, since not one but two moles of methane are reacting, that means not two but four moles of oxygen will react to produce our uh, products. That's, that's because two times two is four. That means we're going to produce two moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of oxygen. Now, that's exactly what I said here. Once our reaction runs to completion, two moles of methane and four moles of oxygen are used up to produce two moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of H2O. But notice, we begin with six moles of oxygen. That means if only four moles of oxygen were used up, we have two moles of oxygen left over. And that means one of the reactants is completely used up, it's depleted, while the other reactant is still left. So some of this guy is left over. That means this guy is our limiting reagent. A limiting reagent is simply a reactant that's completely used up. Now if both of these guys were used up, that means both of these guys were the limiting reagents.